Hi, this study is peace and safety. Have you heard recently the uh, the world talking about peace? It's really amazing. It's <laughs> it's something to be really witnessing at this time because and in First Thessalonians. When we've been looking at this, but the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I think that word escape is also flee. Um... But but ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So we have this information in the Bible talking about the day of the Lord, the prelude to the day of the Lord, and what's going to be said. Um, what's hard to understand here is is this talking about the houses of God proclaiming this, because the example given in the Old Testament is they. Um, healed the hurt of my people slightly by saying peace peace where there is no peace and that had to do with the prophet and the priest so you have that aspect of it but you also have that the day of the Lord is not um, exclusive to um, just the houses of God it, it's a worldwide it's upon the nations when the day of the Lord hits the one verse that talks about the day of the Lord is upon the heathen, what the Bible, the translators translate as nations as heathen. Um, whatever they had done, it'll, it'll come back under their own head. So that's one aspect of this. And when you start to hear these world leaders stand up, North and South Korea making peace all of a sudden, um, India's uh, leader making wanting peace, and the United States uh, having peace talks uh, between uh, the United States and North Korea, all of a sudden it just it seems like it's formulating to um, a grand prelude of the day of the Lord. Now this is May. We have uh, approximately 20 days before, or probably less than that by the time this gets up. It's uh, Today's the 2nd of May. And uh, the seven years of Great Tribulation, I believe, ends in uh, May the 20th. That's Pentecost. And we can know this. Um, in all these studies, you know, the, the good information that comes forth from studying God's Word is when you look at the historical patterns, you will see a, an example set forth by God to where we will know when it says that that day will, won't overtake you as a thief because if you study God's word you're going to know the, the first day of the Lord when Peter stood up and proclaimed these men aren't drunk but this is what was proclaimed by Joel the prophet and you go to Joel 2 and there's the day of the Lord mentioned and everything else he said is in that same chapter so you have you have that example and that if you study the timeline of history, we know that that occurred, Pentecost occurs in any given year um, around this time of year in, in May. So we have a good idea when the original day of the Lord happened. So we can, um, we can assume that the day of the Lord, when it's talking about this um, not overtaking as a, as a thief, uh, besides the major clue of they'll be saying peace, peace, and then said, or peace and safety, uh, peace and security, and then sudden destruction will come. It's interesting that this is all happening now, and I know there's not much time left. If if this is going to be a more of a an absolute worldwide phenomenon that goes on, where all the nations are all of a sudden saying peace, we're at peace. Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, wait, th a lot of this stuff is wait and see just have to wait and see. Now I know people have been proclaiming their anxiety of a World War III before all, all the North and South Korea uh, was talked about, you know, going over there and stepping over the border, stepping over the border and you have peace. Um, but the Bible gives us certain clues 
to know that we don't have to fear a World War III. We don't have to have to anything to do with worrying about any of that because it says you will be hearing, hearing of wars and rumors of wars. And what did Christ say? These things have to be. But let not your heart be troubled. The end is not yet. And then, that's, well, that's Matthew 24, 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that your heart be not troubled. For these things, all these things, must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So where where do we pay attention? What what are the like the major clues to know that we're coming up into the day of the Lord and we're approaching that time period? Um, it's uh, well, the believers are going to understand the times and seasons. That's what First Thessalonians says. The disciples they had asked Christ, you know, is this the time you're going to restore? Yeah, are these? Is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel, back to Israel? And, of course, they're talking about the believers in Christ. Israel is are the believers in Christ. And Christ said, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's You go out into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, it is not for you to know the times and seasons. And a lot of pastors and whoever will use that verse and say, see, we can't know the times and seasons. But that was, that was specifically for the disciples because... That many hundreds of years ago, it wasn't for them to understand the times and seasons. But when we get to the peace and safety, message in First Thessalonians, but of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. You are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. There's that command to watch again. Watch, watch, watch. What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. You know, there's people who have I've debated with and stuff online, and it's, um, you know, it, this whole idea of, of watching is for the main sole purpose that we are watching for the coming of Christ as he commanded us to. We're not to be just like carrying on in the world and, and just being distracted by all that stuff. We're supposed to be watching and being prepared for when he comes. Um, it, therefore, oh, we are you are all children of the light and the children of the day. You are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Now, in the book Seven Years Tomorrow, we established that, um, and also on 2011 studies here, that the day of the Lord is a judgment process. It's not just a single day and then it's over. I think certain passages apply um, more toward the end of the day of the Lord, and certain passages maybe apply to when it starts. But we can know this, that the day of the Lord included uh, salvation because when Peter stood up it was that same day that about 3,000 were saved um, and will we know that we're in the day of the Lord I believe we will not only will the prelude of the day of the Lord of peace and safety being said and not necessarily that this peace and safety is real it doesn't mean it's it's you know this world's finally at peace but it's being proclaimed peace and safety peace and safety they will be saying. Um, I wanted to read Obadiah, Obadiah 1, 1 on 13 through uh, 17. 
Thou should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity, yea, thou should not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Um, we have the, the spiritual Mount Zion mentioned where the people flee to God and uh, obtain salvation as they cry out to Him. And that's going to happen. Joel 2 proclaims that same thing. Even though when the sun and the, the moon are darkened before that day, that, that time period, um, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's, that's really good news. We have also established the timing of the day of the Lord according to the biblical example in 33 AD, the original day of the Lord. In any given year, it must come during the season, during the anniversary of the cross, and especially Pentecost, which in 2018 is May the 20th. And May 20th does also in the seven-year Great Tribulation. If we if we've done this right, if we've projected this uh, seven years of Great Tribulation, and one aspect of that that I don't know if I even covered. I can't remember if I covered. I did so many studies. Um, I might have, but I can't remember. Anyway. The those who remain, we were talking about the 8,400 days and how that was um, related to the 70 years of Judah's captivity, and the Bible says that those who remained um, and didn't escape out or, or go leave out, they were in great tribulation. Now, when you have that whole comparison with uh, the Judah's captivity to the 23 years or the 8,400 days that ended in uh, May 21, 2011, you have that whole act, that when we reach that point of the end of it, the, the next following thing, if you're looking at history, was that there was great tribulation for those who remained. And that was one aspect of how we knew the seven years was accurate, um, as far as great tribulation. Unless we missed something. And if we did, we did. I don't know. I mean, I at this point, I'm taking a wait and see attitude on this because um, what is what has gone through my mind in this past couple months is are you sure are you sure you have the three and a half years right the time times and half a time because once you have that if it in fact is a three and a half year period you could know okay from 2014 to 2018 uh, say Satan has this period of time where he's able to wear down the saints of the Most High for a time, times, and half a time. That's if that absolutely represents a, a three and a half year period. A time, one, times, two, and then a half, half a year. So that's three and a half years. And that's hard to really conclude. It, I mean, for instance, if you wanted to say, okay, the time could represent one period of time, maybe the 8,400 days, then there's the, the times, maybe a seven year period divided in two, into two, three and a halves, a time and a time, and then a half a time, which would be, after the seven years, another three and a half, um, which would bring us to uh, 2021, I believe. And I've been looking at this. Is this possible? Is this possible? But there's no way you would really can know. You just have to be watching. You have to be studying and watching. And if God's going to reveal something, He's going to reveal it. If He's not going to reveal, if the time is not right for revealing, 
Um, that's why I could care less if people say, oh, you're a false teacher, and, you know, you were teaching this and it didn't come to pass, whatever. No, we're watching. We're watching like Christ, you know, commanded us to. And we answer to him. We don't answer to anybody else. So we're looking at this very carefully. We're, we're hearing peace and safety right now um, on a world scale. And I can only imagine if, if, if their success in this peace and safety um, talks and all this, if there's success, you know, who will follow suit? Like, will other nations start doing it? Like, India is starting to mention this. So, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Wait and see. Um, now, in Acts, um, we know that during the day of the Lord, uh, the, that season was a great season for salvation. Um, it seems like a, a salvation came in waves. But I believe the day of the Lord, um, right up until this, the, the Feast of Tabernacles in uh, 2018, is a, a great time of salvation. That whole four month and 11 days, I believe it is, that whole four month period um, where the harvest is great. The harvest is great. Um, now this is what the question was posed in 33 AD. And Peter did an excellent job explaining everything um, as he stood up and he said, no, these men aren't drunk. This is a fulfillment of Joel 2. Um, Acts 2.8 And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Acts 2.11 there, there's a bunch of other names. I, I'm skipping those. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Um, that's another thing about Joel 2. God says he's going to reverse things. You have all this language in Joel 2, the first part, and then God says, I'm going to reverse the years that the locusts destroyed. And that starts happening during the day of the Lord. And... Uh, it's a judgment process on the whole world, but still, that starts that whole reversal. It starts looking very good for the believers in Christ at that point. And even in Daniel, where it says that um, judgment will sit, and then um, we will consume and destroy the kingdom of Satan unto the end. Um, let's see, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our our tongues the wonderful works of God, and they were all amazed and were in in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocked, say, saying, these, men's are, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day, but this, there's got to be some spiritual language to that third hour of the day too. I hadn't looked at that, but um, but this is what, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the days, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young man shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I, I've studied that little section before. And I think there's just, the, the whole Old Testament was visions and dreams and uh, the, like in Daniel and understanding those. Um, I think this is basically saying a, a major understanding of God's word at that point as, as visions and dreams are mentioned. <clears throat> and upon my servants and upon my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. They shall declare God's word. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. This language, um, I printed out a study. This is going to be, if I can fit it in, I'm going to fit it in. If not, it will be part two of this. Um, the vapor of smoke is very fascinating. Uh, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now when we go back to where Peter was quoting from, we find the term the day of the Lord. And that's in Joel 2. 
The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. He is, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Now much of this language needs to be studied more. I, I'm, I'm going into this because I wanted to show um, the reversal of what, what God does here in Joel 2. Uh, this is Joel 2.19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye should be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a, repro a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern, and I, the armies, I tell us, I, so it's just the northern, who is Satan himself, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate, and his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. We did a, a study on the, the fig tree and the vine, um, how absolutely it was a blessing at that time, and it's very spiritual language regarding salvation. Um, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, in the first. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Again, wine and oil is very spiritual language of uh, salvation and God's uh, spirit. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cank worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent upon, sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God uh, that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward I will part my spirit upon all flesh. See, now this is what's fascinating because it's transferring right into never being ashamed to and I will pour out my spirit upon it shall come to pass afterward. So if we're in the season um, or we're approaching the season of the day of the Lord, um, this whole language of salvation, of pouring out his spirit uh, afterward, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh this is what uh, Peter was quoting, what happened in Acts. So, yeah, in Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Uh, as the Lord has said, in the remnant, or the remainder, whom the Lord shall call. Are we close to the day of the Lord? You know, I believe we are. Um... What it says, I it'll, it shall come to pass afterward. That's really curious language. Uh, right when you think you studied something, you have it. <laughs> it's really something, man. It's like this is, you know, you keep your ear to the ground. What's happening now? Peace and safety. They're saying it, but is that is there enough time before? Um, I mean, I guess they don't have to say it for long. They could say it for a week, and then God could bring and usher in the day of the Lord. But it, I I don't know, and this is the peace and safety. Uh, Kim Jong Un and Moon Jae In commit to Korean peace regime to end nuclear conflict as an historic summit. That's uh, April twenty seven, two thousand eighteen. The Telegraph UK. Um, Egypt's ambassador to Israel. Peace between Egypt and Israel is strong, stable. Um, there again, they're saying peace, peace. And that was um, March 24, 2017. Um, there's, there's videos, too, on YouTube. Donald Trump, Peace and Safety, 9-17-16. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Other people are seeing this. The same thing that I was, I was talking about uh, when the, the campaign was going on, how 
uh, President Trump was just saying peace and safety over and over again. And man, it was just like, it was sort of startling because it's like he's, he's proclaiming it. He becomes president and then he's going to, you know, proclaim it and, and, and create a peace and safety somehow. Um, and that was before any of this North Korean thing uh, happened. Uh, let's see, 2013, Obama speaks of peace and security in a YouTube video called Chilling, when they say peace and security, then sudden destruction. So we've had, actually, when we you know, think about that, we've had this, this language of peace and safety uh, for a number of years, actually. But now that they're saying it more and more, you know, maybe that's enough that we're going to enter the day of the Lord soon. And that's, if that's what God's will is, that's what God's will is. Um, that's going to be, again, in any given year, we have the the month of May, um, and I'm not sure if it, it straddles another month, like April, May, but most, mostly what I've seen um, in the years that it's around May, May 20th, May 21st, because Pentecost falls on that time, it is the season of Pentecost, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It really is. I still think, though, this is a great time to cry out for salvation because this is the time where the Bible proclaims it, you know. And we've we've had studies prior to this study talking about the uh, the eclipses that happened in 2017, whether that is actually that's actually the fulfillment of these verses of the sun and the moon getting becoming dark or there's going to be a supernatural event somehow that God's going to do that and if that's the case that's the case but we have to look at everything you know we have to look at everything and be watching we just have to be watching and paying attention um i'm going to do a part 2 on this and i'll i'll do it right after this so it'll probably be this will probably be an hour study, um, just to get it up before uh, the Pentecost uh, season happens. Uh, anything else? I I don't know. I you know, people are asking me. Do you still believe it's it's um, the Feast of Tabernacles? Is is uh, yeah? I do believe the Feast of Tabernacles is an accurate time for uh, the return of Christ. But the day of the Lord, I think there's been some misunderstandings that, I, that they've been thinking I've been saying that May 20th is the end all. It's not. It's the, the day of the Lord is a longer period of time. And uh, if it is 2018, if it is this year, then we're going to see some significant um, turnarounds according to Joel 2 and how God says, Fear not, O land. You know, let your hearts rejoice. So there we are. We're, I believe we're approaching that, that period of time that is really significant uh, as a prelude to the coming of Christ. Okay, this is a second part of this study. Uh, vapors of smoke, the day of the Lord. Now in Acts 2, there's a variation between Acts 2 and Joel 2. This is Acts 2.19, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. That's the the main highlight vapors of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved that's the message of salvation right to the end um, there's a bit of variation between Acts 2 and Joel 2 and I think God does this to further give um, Understanding what the day of the Lord entails. In Acts 2, uh, we read how the uh, wonders in the heavens, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. In Joel 2, the language is, um, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said. And in the remnant, the remainder, whom the Lord shall call. Uh, so we're dealing with the difference of pillars of smoke 
and vapor of smoke. Now in the Old Testament the term pillars of smoke relates to the following. In the Song of Solomon there's uh, Christ is identified as the pillars of smoke. Um, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant? Now, it's interesting that he, that's also obviously relating to Christ. Um, the whole language of myrrh and frankincense is uh, definitely related to Christ. Um, and the pillars of, as or like pillars of smoke, it says. Um, now the vapor of smoke, there's a, there's a couple aspects of this. One is the power and glory when it deals with smoke, like in the book of Revelation. It's, uh, it deals with the glory and the power of God. Revelation 15.7 and one of the four beasts came, and this is uh, Revelation 15, 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So here we have um, the glory of God related to the smoke. From the glory of God uh, and from his power. Now when we see frankincense in the Old Testament it's related to the praise of God, Isaiah 61, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the earth, I'm sorry, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee the sons shall come from afar and the daughters shall be nursed at thy side um, this is Isaiah 65 60 verse 5 then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitudes of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come, and they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of God. Now the Hebrew word for incense is frankincense. Um, this is uh, Psalm of Solomon 4, 6. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love, and there is no spot in thee. Excuse me for a second. I've got something in my eye. There. <laughs> That'll take care of it. <laughs> myrrh and frankincense relate to Christ. Now in Matthew 2.11 uh, 2, it says, And when they were come into the house, they saw a young child with Mary, saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now you wonder why Christ did not drink the myrrh on the cross. Um, and it's probably for the, the sole reason that it was a numbing agent and you had to endure, and it was used for burial actually, and you had to, he had to endure the, the wrath of God um, with, no, with no numbing whatsoever. And that's in Matthew 15, 23. And they gave, uh, gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, uh, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Uh, let's see. Now this is John 19:38. And this is how it related to the myrrh related to his burial. After this, Joseph Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, brought besought Pilate that he might take away the, the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. And he came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at, at first 
which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took the body of Jesus and wound it up in linen clothes and with spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now, there's, there's one other aspect of, um, is it the pillars? Yeah, the pillars of smoke ascended into heaven. And this is interesting because this is from Judges 20. And this is where the children of Benjamin uh, would not surrender the children of Belial for an evil act. And the children of Israel warred against the Benjaminites for that reason. Um, and the pillars of smoke is, is mentioned there. Uh, it is a judgment. So that might be one aspect of it too. We have a couple aspects of the glory of God um, and the judgment of God with the pillars of smoke. And Christ himself, actually, um, coming out of the wilderness as uh, the pillars of smoke. Let's see, Judges uh, 20, 38. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame with a smoke rise up out of the city. I, I'm sorry, and they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill the men of Israel, about 30 persons. For they said, Surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjaminites looked behind them and behold the flame of the city ascended up to heaven and when the men of Israel turned again the men of Benjamin were amazed for they saw that evil was come upon them now in this case the pillar of smoke was a sign and indicator that judgment has fallen for evil for the evil that they did um, so here's the two comparisons Joel 2:30. I will show Wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. Acts 2.19 And I will show wonders in the heaven, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapors of smoke. So we have a variation there, and um, I think I think the whole aspect of the, the vapors of smoke and the pillars of smoke may be saying a little bit of a variation of difference, but it's, it's significant because it's... It, seems like it's the time of judgment has come and the glory of God to be revealed. I wanted to conclude this study with the phrase of woman in travail as uh, 1 Thessalonians talks about when it talks about the, the prelude to the day of the, the Lord. Uh, Brethren, that day shall not overtake you as a thief. There's 11 verses which mention women in travail or woman in travail and many of them are in Jeremiah. There's seven which use a variation of travaileth um, and why they did that, I don't know, but it's it's pretty much the same language. They just changed the, the to old English travaileth. Um, this is Isaiah thirteen three, and this relates to the day of the Lord. So that's the one I wanted to choose um, to show. You know the seriousness of the day of the Lord and what's coming. Um, Isaiah 13.3 I have commanded my sanctified ones I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of the nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle.
They come from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take a hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, both cruel and with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. For he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even as a man, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be, and it shall be as a chaste roe and as, as sheep that no man taketh up. They they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed, dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold. I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Isaiah thirteen eighteen. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be when, as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch their tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Um, when we understand how Mystery Babylon in Revelation refers to the fallen houses of God, uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Uh, we can see this language does cover uh, judgment on the houses of God, but it also covers the world. Where you know there's there's language of uh, the nations in here. Uh, noise of the kingdom of the nations gathered together. So, how ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it will come as a destruction from the Almighty. So, we have this idea when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Um, again, they're going to be saying peace and safety. That doesn't mean it, it has anything to do with true peace and safety. Uh, but we have to look at this language because uh, this relates. This definitely relates. The other 11 verses, you can go in into any Bible study and just type on type in women, I'm sorry, woman in travail or travaileth and uh, look at all the verses that talk about um, that particular language that God uses in 1 Thessalonians. So, you know, personally, I, I do hope there's more time because this language is very serious. It is very, very sobering when you think about this language. It's going to happen. The, the day of the Lord will happen. Um, I, I personally, I, I look at this in just um, a, 
a type of way where it's like if it doesn't happen, God's mercy is shown if it doesn't happen because uh, it says he endures with with much uh, his his mercy endures and his uh, long suffering and that's what second Peter three is all about his long suffering um, so that's it for this study. I just wanted to get this up before we enter the the time of uh, Pentecost, which uh, should be a time of great salvation worldwide. And uh, as I, I believe, as that time goes on further into the day of the Lord, a lot of this language is going to be uh, coming to pass. If this is the year, and we can we can say that we know, we can say now that we know that the day of the Lord in any given year is associated with Pentecost or even a little bit before with the anniversary of the cross. So we can say we have the vicinity of time with any given year. And that's a good thing because we can be looking for such language as uh, they shall be saying peace and safety. Because they're saying it. They're saying it right now. Will it get to the extent where the whole world will, in, including uh, the Middle East will be saying peace and safety, including the churches being saying be saying peace and safety. Um, that's to be seen, you know. So anyway, um, if God has mercy on this whole situation, and we pass, um, we go past. The, well, October is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. If we go past that, then we have some more studying to do, and that's all there's to it. There's we we present what we know from God's Word and we still watch we still keep watching because that's uh, what Christ commands you know I say unto you I say unto all watch so that's the um, study uh, 2011 studies at gmail if anybody wants to email me thank you and God bless